Hello everyone, welcome to Richmond Raceway. Last time we were here, this was the playoff opener on asphalt, but this season, it is a dirt track. And with the dirt track come some special dirt track rules. Qualifying was held yesterday, it was a series of five hot, of four hot lap sessions of five minutes each. Today we will have four heats with the lineup that will set the starting lineup by passing points. Passing points can be earned by being by in the heat results by being top 10 in qualifying or by gaining spots from where you start to where you finish. Here's the heat format for today. We're going to have 20 laps each in each heat. Cautions will be for major incidents, but if someone taps the wall, there's not going to be a caution for that. And no live pit stops for the heat. Unless you're pitting to repair damage, you probably should not pit at all. So this is going to be... Uh, going to be straightforward race to the finish who's got the most talent starts up front open the open drivers for today we've got 18 of them on the entry list eight of them will be going home so we will have a 40 car field for today c package air at home owns a lot of these open cars those two are on the front row qualified one two and all the others and most of the others qualified near the front of the field so it's going to be interesting to see if they can hold off sort of these regular drivers. Here's our Heat 1 lineup. You've got C Packet and KR on the front row. Two open drivers. That's going to be a running theme tonight. Leland Fife, another open driver in third. The first non open driver is Evan Toddy in fourth. Gavin Grant, Lindsey Dietz, and Demo Redneck are the other open cars in this field. It's going to be pretty interesting to see if these guys can hold on, on to their. Uh, can, uh, or not necessarily hold on, but how many points they can acquire throughout the course of the heat race tonight. Cars are pulling off now. Here's C Packet. He replaced Nick Nelson last week in the Brink 37 and performed quite admirably. Um, he finished 11th on the lead lap, the last car on the lead lap. His teammate, Kate Bishop, dominated the race. His other two teammates were kind of crappy, so... Not necessarily crappy, but they didn't. They just didn't have the speed. So it'll be in, so with CPAC and on pole today. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if Brink is with this sort of revamped driver lineup is now going to start finding the speed that they should have. All their cars qualified really well. A CPAC it leads into the green and heat one. Right behind C Packet, KR is going to duck in line. He's going to try to hold off Leland Fife, not going to be able to. Leland Fife is in a new team. He has actually not specified the name of this team yet. I uh, I don't know when he will, but at some point he's got uh, two, three wide for second. Heaven, Toddy on the bottom, making it happen. Looking for those passing points right here, and that and that finishing point, and maybe even setting his sights on C Packet in the lead. Brandon Allen right behind him, as is the 62 of Carter Jones. Carter Jones, a pretty solid dirt racer, won set one, I believe, two races in the first season of the Amsoil Dirt Late Model Series. He won at Orange County. Actually, I think that was his only one. But he was top five, but he was top five and top six in points actually. So we know he's good on dirt, and he's proving it here today, moving through the field quickly here. Also coming up through the field is Zach Stern, who started in the last row, four laps in, he's up to seventh. 
and I want to point, look at the visibility of these cars right now. They're, these, the dust is wild right now. I don't think we saw dust like this in practice. Visibility was a talking point during, pra during practice as these cup cars not designed for dirt, obviously. If we're on board with Zach Stern. He can't see anything. Look at this. He did, the car right in front of him is only about two tenths ahead of him, and he cannot see them whatsoever. That's just a handful of car lengths, and you got total blindness. What happens if the 19 of Leland 5 checks up, you know? the uh, This might be something that the series has to address, honestly, because this is this is dangerous to run right here. Zach Stern now goes to the inside of Leland 5 for fifth place. Brandon Allen up ahead, up the track ahead of him. That's going to be a, that's another spot that the 883 can go after. Zach Stern, also a very good dirt racer, he was the ADLMS champion, won three races, including two of the first three, as well as the Chili Bowl. So Stern, a very strong racer. He's recently won at uh, Canandaigua as well. So another strong dirt performance for Zach Stern. And C Packet has built up a lead. No real competition for him right now as Carter Jones and Evan Toddy battle for second. And now a battle for fourth is about to go underway. Stern to the inside of what is this week his true teammate of Brandon Allen. The the, uh, the interaction between Tau Racing and Race Gaze this season is quite interesting. Whenever Don Falconer is in the car, it's a true Tau Racing car. It's, it's held... Prayer by Alan Mooch, uh, not Alan Mooch, uh, Brandon Allen, as you see Lindsay Beats in the back there struggling. It's, uh, but it's a, mostly a Tau Racing chassis. But when, but in weeks where Zach Stern is in the car, it's a true race gaze car. It is completely manufactured and assembled by race gaze, operated by that, by the Tau Racing team, but the car itself is a race gaze car, and Obviously, a lot of power to it. You see, he's up to fourth place. Evan Toddy has taken second back. This is something I think we're going to see a lot. Is a lot of back and forth between these cars because it's uh, because it's dirt, and these are all very talented drivers. So you're going to see them largely stay together for most of the night, and you're going to see them swapping positions a lot. You see Brandon Allen going back after the 83. Uh, Brandon, a two-time winner in the ADLMS, very strong on the dirt. Here's Leland Fife on an island right now. Half a second behind him, a full s of half a second ahead of him, a full second behind him. Kylie Greider kind of struggling right now. Second place once again. These two are starting to reel in the 37 of C packet. And Jones takes the spot. But these guys probably have to work together a little better than they are. Because the more they battle, the less uh, the less straight line speed they have. Because whenever you get side by side in these cup cars, it doesn't, it doesn't really seem to be an aero effect. Just as much as a mechanical grip effect. You just lose speed. You see right there, by going side by side, Evan and Carter lost a tenth of a second to C-Packet. Where they had been gaining a tenth of a second per lap. And they're probably going to go after it again. But I don't... Although, to be fair, it might not necessarily be too advantageous to attack C-Packet right now. Because it's not the race. This isn't the main show. So, you're kind of looking for spots as you find them here. You're not really necessarily looking for a win as big as much as it is. It really might be just bragging rights at this point to win this race. Free to go. Evan Taddy holds second. Up the track, here comes the 62. The visibility is awful. Wow, I cannot believe these guys have been clean so far. No incidents on track, despite this awful visibility. Maybe these drivers don't need help. Maybe, they, maybe they've got it under control. You see, the CPAC takes the white flag. This is gonna. This has got to be a positive sign for Brink right here. C Packet is gonna dominate Heat One. He's gonna come around turns three and four, and he's gonna make his team owner proud. 
C Packet wins Heat one from the pole. Brandon Allen just steals fourth from Zach Stern at the last possible second. Less than two seconds separates the top six. See that parody in the field right there. C Packet wins Heat one. We'll be back right after this. I lift my heart as spring lifts up. A yellow daisy to the rain. My heart will be a lovely cup, although it holds but pain. For I shall learn from flower and leaf that color every drop they hold. To change the lifeless wine of grief to living gold. Welcome back to uh, Richmond Raceway here. Here are your Heat 1 points results. So C-Packet, 22 points is going to be a lot to overcome. 10 points for the pole, 12 for winning the Heat. So that's a tall task for anyone to try to beat him. Uh, Carter Jones, 17 points. Axter and 14, point, 14 points. Very respectable. Gavin Grant, Lindsey Dietz, and Demo Redneck probably sweating a little bit. 5 point, points, 3 point, and 1 point there. It's going to be borderline to make this race. Here's our here's Heat 2, and here's the starting lineup. Jared Holmes, Nate Wines on the front row. Xander Thompson and Benjamin Deloney, the other open cars in this field. And keep an eye on that last row, J.D. Bregler and Tanner Campos. I think, think if anyone is going to dethrone C-Packet for the pole, it's going to be one of those two cars. Tanner can get as many as 11 passing points today. J.D. can get 10. They are, and they are both very fast cars. Tanner won multiple races in the ADLMS. J.D. Bregler doesn't have necessarily a lot of dirt experience, but as the MLNCS champion, I think he'll adapt quite just fine. Also in this field is, uh, the, po is the points leader, Justin Ricci. Ricci actually owns the ADLMS. He's a very avid dirt racer. But we haven't seen him necessarily live, but you just know he's going to be good today. Four wins on the year, over a 130-point lead in the standings. He is on another level. So we're coming to the green flag, and Jared Holmes leads him off. Jarrett Holmes, a solid dirt racer himself, as they're three wide. Um, four wide for second for um, for a little bit. Nate Wines is going to get clear. Justin Ricci with the aggressive moves. Kayla Marinelli, the 15, is going to follow through. There's J.D. Bregler already into the top five. Is Tyler King now struggling? Xander Thompson stuck in the middle. The visibility horrendous as they're going three wide. Tanner Campos following through with through with the five, and the fifteen is going to take this a third from the twelve. This is, oh, this is going to be this is going to be good. This, this five and this double zero, they're flying through the field right now. Seth Peters trying to go go with them. JD to the inside of Justin Ricci. This, this field this is getting this is a little bit more wild than Heat One was. I think these drivers saw Heat 1, They, I think they're a little more confident in, in the track and what their cars are going to do now, now that they have an idea of how this track is racing, and they are make, and they are making big moves, Tanner looks inside 3 wide. Not going to make it, ooh, he barely sticks it, slides up into the 5, Tanner Campos is on a mission, he knows he can go get that pole. Seth Peters now to his inside, trying to trying to get his, at spots for himself. Three wide behind him, almost. Tyler King now starting to work his way back forward. Behind them, you've got Kyler Scott, Benjamin Deloney, and Paul Donlin all racing together. 
reaching now to the bottom of Seth Peters as he starts to find his groove. Nate Wines has taken the lead up ahead. And now three wide, Tyler King. There is zero visibility. I am shocked these guys are able to make this work. Look at Tanner. Look, look this is from the windshield of Tanner. There's no visit, but you can see JD. But you can't see, you can barely see that big contrail of Seth Peters. Justin Ricci right ahead of him is barely visible. <laughs> Tyler King right here. Pro probably slipped up. Not see, not knowing where his marks are. These guys are practically operating on muscle memory. Seth Peters here. And now Nate Wines going back after that 96 as Jared has retaken the lead. Benjamin Deloney to the inside of J.D. Bregler. He's an open car. He needs to get points. He, know, he knows the mark now. He knows his mark. He needs to get at least five points. Ooh, Tanner and Paul Donlin were tight right there. This is a battle we've seen before. Deloney and Campos. Peters and Ricci racing each other up ahead. Deloney to the inside. This is gonna. This might be tight. Tanner's not going to give him a lot of room. Contact made. Into the wall. And up and over goes Paul Donlin. Barrel rolling violently and landing on top of the inside wall. Caution is out. Wow. Nate Wines led them back to the line. Benjamin Deloney has a lot of damage here. Tanner Campos is destroyed. Don't expect to see anyone come down here. Except for that double zero. Yeah, there's Tanner coming down. Look at that car. Front end is Kate. That's a backup. That is a backup car right there. Tanner's going to have to start in the back. There's a replay of what happened. I don't, oh, that wasn't Tanner. That was Deloney sliding up the track, up and into Tanner, and got hooked trying to, I guess, cut him off. Wow. I have no idea how Paul Donlin got up in the air like that. Just comes to rest on top of the inside wall. Here's a look at it from Tanner's point of view. Yeah, you see, Deloney just comes up, and I mean, maybe Tanner came down, but he also has no visibility. That, this is what I was talking about before with the low visibility. I don't. Deloney's spotter probably either thought he was clear. Or Deloney tried to clear himself and just had no idea where Tanner was. Let's go back to that wreck again. I want to see how Paul Donlin gets in the air right here. So let's focus on the 32. The 60 hits him. You just kind of, that's weird, he just kind of wedges up against the wall and just starts barrel rolling. This is not something I would expect a big heavy stock car like this to do. Although they are going really fast around here. These laps, these lap times are insane. Under 19 seconds around Richmond. Well under 19, almost 18 second laps. You got to think, going about almost like 140 miles an hour out of the turn, that might have something to do with it. That is a weird-looking flip right there. Two 
two two to green. When we get to the line, it'll be one one to the one lap to the green flag. Nate Wines up in the lead. Jared Holmes is in second. Kayla Marinelli is in third, having a great race. Tyler King is fourth. Seth Peters is fifth. Justin Ricci sixth. J.D. Bregler in seventh. Kyle Scott in eighth. And Xander Thompson is the last car running on the track in ninth place. Costly wreck for Benjamin Deloney, who's going to finish 11th. And it's going to be a... It's going to be a long night for him. He might. He's got a tall task to uh, to make it into this race now. He's got. To, he's got to hope that a bunch of open cars have trouble. He doesn't have a lot of owners' points to fall back on either. He's not very high relative to the other owners' drivers. Green flag in the air. Nate Wines gets a huge, big jump on Jared Holmes. Now Kayla Marinelli to the inside of the 96. Caleb's not able to stay with him. Tyler King up the track. Almost four wide again. Seth Peters to the bottom. Now he's going to try to get around the, get the top around J.D. Bregler. JD moving moving on this restart, he's gonna get to fourth place. Now Justin Ricci to the bottom of the 78. No visibility as they take the white flag. Jared Holmes, can he run back down Nate Wines? I was just verifying. So I didn't know if you were heat three or heat four. You're he's gonna look low here. Is it gonna be enough? He can't get the run off. Nate Wines is going to hold him off. He wins Heat 2. back live here are the points results from heat two jared holmes despite not winning the heat he scores the most points with 20 nate wines with close second and 18 so jared holmes currently holds the front row nate wines has 18 points he's going to be in third for now and you see there at the bottom the the, the uh, dnfs benjamin deloney's got a long night the rest of the night with only two points to his name here's heat three and once again, it's two open cars on the front row. Top three are all open cars. Omaki, Sasso, and Wong. Don Falconer this week is in the 29. Kind of a last-minute deal put together with the suspension of Quinn Yeager. Starting 11th is Chris Black, the only other open car in the field. And the... And the, uh, the big title... Con there's really one... Only really one true title contender in this race, and that is the one of Caden Bishop. So we'll see if he can make some noise in this group. Not necessarily a very inconsistent dirt racer. You don't ever really know what you're going to get with Caden. He, but he does have dirt wins, so the talent is there. Let's see if he can do something. Green flag is in the air. Omaki leads him to the line.
Justin Newman with a big move to the inside. Contact into the wall. Looks like it might have been Sasso. And a car sliding to a stop on the backstretch is Marcus Wong. The second place starter. Caution's going to be out. Didn't even make it a full lap. That's going to be a DNF for Marcus Wong, most likely. Justin Newman was able to take second. There's pro there's going to be a lot to unpack here. Let's uh, let's take a dive into this incident here. Field is going to catch back up to Amaki again. Not expecting uh, not expecting pit stops right here. get that replay in a second but we'll talk about Justin Newman for now uh he's sporting a blue here's the replay we'll get we'll get back to Newman later so that there's Marcus Swong sliding up the track he just kind of slides up into Don Falconer just doesn't know he's there no one gets in the air this time thankfully but big damage to Sasso and then Marcus Wong just, what happened to him? He just starts spinning. It's a very weird looking wreck again. Newman on the bottom, Sasso up top, they're four wide right here. Watch, they just go straight into the wall. Ooh. That doesn't look, that's a, that's a third speed and it looks like a big hit for Sasso. It's going to be a big hit for Brink as well. They were looking to get all four of their cars into this race. The other open car, the other two open cars, C Packet and Nate Wines, are both in with flying colors. Sasso is going to have a big task ahead of him. Here's the onboard with Don Falconer. Ooh! Falconer probably has a ton of damage from that as well. So that Anthony Sasso has got a long night, going to have the longest 15 laps of his life coming up. Let's go back to Justin Newman for a second. This is what I was talking about before. He has a blue and yellow paint scheme. That is a that is a special paint scheme being run for a relief fund for the people of Ukraine. People of Ukraine right now suffering some. Uh, some uh, unthinkable sort of brutality, and it and Justin Newman decided he wanted to support the people, wanted to support the people of Ukraine in any way he could. So, running this car hopefully gets some people to donate to Ukrainian relief. A lot of the other drivers are wearing patches on their fire suits, not necessarily anything on their car. See one to go to the green. In, I don't know if that incident caught Caden Bishop. He lost a ton of ground on that restart. Doesn't seem like he has too much damage. Top five is going to be Omaki Newman. Speed Leon, Black, then Davidson, Falconer, Roden, Mooch, and Bishop, the top 10. Here's Omaki. Pace cars off. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. Green flag. He's leading him off. He did not get a good jump, though. Newman right with him. Can Newman look to the inside in this turn? Omaki up the track. Here comes Justin Newman. Justin Newman looking to win race. Can he make the move to the bottom of the racetrack? Not quite able to get there. 
still right on the 18's bumper. To the inside. Not able to stay with him on corner exit. Running the same line here a little lower. Leon to third. Here comes Justin Newman again. Contact made between the 6 and the 18. Now where's the 2 go? 2 goes to the bottom. Teammate the 94 lets him in. Let Justin Newman do, do the work for him to pass this 18 car. But can Newman get back there? Gains there. In turn 2. Big train. Coming at the 18 right now. Newman. Going to be right on his bumper heading into turn 1 with 10 to go. Newman's going to be there. He's there. No contact this time. Side by side down the back stretch. Newman. Oh, he's going to slide up the track. Here comes Leon to the inside. Three wide for the lead. Two, six, 18. Leon. Is gonna take the lead. He slides up the track, forces Omaki out of the out of the way. Three wide behind him. Davidson now forces Omaki up the track. Davidson started last. He has a chance at the pole. He has a chance at the pole if he can win this race. Leon is Leon is away. Davidson now through to second. Here comes Alan Mooch to th trying to get third. Alan Mooch to the inside of Omaki. Is he going to get there? He's there. Can he stay with him? There he is. Now he's got this turn three, which is much better for the inside line. Mooch to third. Now he's going to go for second. Logan Speed going with him. Three wide for second. Not quite. Mooch through the middle is going to get is going to have the advantage. Now Omaki to the bottom. He's going to go three wide for third. He's going to try at least. Cannot quite get to the inside of the 94. Yes, he does. Davidson way up the track. Now Mooch up to second. Mooch, the current 80 LMS points leader, trying now to run down Leon. Omaki. Through to third. Justin Newman trying to take fourth. Caden Bishop in the back hanging on to this battle trying to get underneath Patrick Roden. Logan Speed now falling back. Three laps to go. Davidson back to the bottom. He's looking for fourth place. Now Falconer trying to get in on this action. Mooch, can he run down Leon? Two to go. Less than four tenths is the gap. They're coming up on Sasso. Coming to the white flag. Leon, way up the track. But he's going to see the white flag. One to go. Brian Leon trying to hold him off. Leon is going to hold him off and he's going to win Heat 3. What a drive for Brian Leon. He started ninth. He wins the Heat. Alan Mooch came oh so close. But that's going to be a great performance by Alan Mooch. We'll be back right after.
Welcome back. Here are our results from Heat 3. Brian Leon with a big race. It's going to tie him with Jared Holmes, so he'll start third. Trevor Davidson and Alan Mooch also had big days. James Omaki with a ton of points. Not a lot of points out there. Logan Speed, Chris Black, Anthony Sasso, Marcus Wong. They're going to be sweating. Marcus Wong is uh, probably done. That's probably a DNQ. Anthony Sasso has a, still has a small chance. So, you know, Sasso, we now know for sure, is a DNQ. So very unfortunate there for Brink. Could not get all of their cars into the race. And now here's he four. Ethan O'Connor is going to start on pole for that very impressive, awesome Fox Motorsports startup team. Really not wasn't sure what to expect when this team came together in second. And they've put together some pretty consistently good races. Sydney Allen there on the front row. General Jake and Anthony Garcia Luna. The other two open cars are all going to start in the top half of this huge field. The contenders in this race should be Ethan Farley and Dylan Jones. Ethan Farley has been on a roll lately, second place at Darlington. Missed three races earlier in the season, or else we'd probably be talking about him being in the middle, in, smack dab in the middle of playoff contention. That team is currently 12th in owner's points. So, gonna if he misses, it's going to be a what could have been season for Ethan Farley. Dylan Jones obviously in with a win and 7th in points. His pace car is off. Ethan O'Connor and the Pokemon machine is going to lead them to the green flag. And right off the bat, three wide, Roberto Crown with a great restart. He's going to get underneath the 23 of Ethan Farley. Gary Russell in the 22 is going to be right there behind him. Gary Russell replacing Brian Logano after an incident in an interview led to the suspension of the driver as now Roberto Crown's going to go for the lead. Roberto Crown in the Rusty's car trying to get the Pokemon car of Ethan O'Connor is now the AAA machine is right there with him as is the GoPro Ford. Sydney Allen trying to hold spots. They're taking it three wide. They're taking it four wide with Tree Slasser Jr. on the bottom. What a move by that 44 car. Dylan Jones is going to go with him. Look at that. Roberto Crown Jr. trying to take the lead now. Still three wide back here. Dylan Jones going to get through. General Jake, his best friend, is going to follow him. Now Tree Slasser Jr. trying to make a move here. Now Ethan O'Connor trying to go back after Roberto Crown Jr. Ethan O'Connor came to play today. Now Ethan Farley and Gary Russell side by side. Farley gets the advantage. He's going to cut off the 22. O'Connor back to the lead. Farley now, up to second. We knew Farley was going to be good today, and now he's going to be running down that that 88 of Ethan O'Connor. Can he get that heat win from him? Looking hard to do it. O'Connor is flying. Farley not able to make a move just yet. Now to the inside. He's trying. He's there. He's going to make the move. Farley's going to lead this lap. Can he make it stick in turn two? Into turn one. He's clear. He's going to slide up in turn two. Farley to the lead. Now Gary Russell's going to go after this 88. Now Roberto Crown's going to go after this 88. Does Dylan Jones have a chance in fifth? We're going to settle in right here. Ethan Farley right now. 
needs some momentum on his side. This is Dylan Jones goes after Ethan O'Connor, but Gary Russell's going to go for the lead. Gary Russell is going to take the lead here in the heat. Not quite yet. Farley fighting back on the outside. Now Roberto Crown's going to go after him as Russell clears. Now Roberto Crown's going to go for the lead. This is going to bring Dylan Jones into this fight. Jones to the inside of the 23. Roberto Crown not able to clear Russell. Russell with the advantage down the back. Oh, this is going to be rough here. Dylan Jones is looking for the lead. Look at him go. Dylan Jones started in the back of the field. He started in eighth. He's going to be in the lead here real quick. Dylan Jones to the lead. Now Farley's going to try to follow through. Ethan O'Connor starting to fall back. Here's General Jake trying to get into the mix. Colin Dover and Ethan O'Connor going, going to battle. Now Gary Russell to the inside is going to try to clear Roberto Crown Jr. He does. Can Far What is Farley now going to be able to do with this 48 car of Dylan Jones, who's driven from the back of the field to the front? Still less than two seconds. Separates the top nine. Farley, a lane lower. Jones gets the run off. Now, just about the same line. Farley maybe a half a pat quarter panel lower. Four to go. Dylan Jones a little lower in that turn. Not quite the same run. But Farley not able to get a run on him in return. Dylan Jones now laying up in turn three and four. Not able to do anything here. Ethan Farley trying to stay with him. Quarter second separates the two. Coming to two to go. Ethan Farley now in this tire tracks. Garrett, General Jake is going to get a position. Coming to the white flag. Three and four. Dylan Jones now lower on the track than Ethan Farley. One to go. Can Dylan Jones hold him off? It would be huge for Dylan Jones to win this. He has not won since in South Boston. It would be a huge momentum boost for Dylan to beat Ethan Farley head to head. And Dylan Jones is going to win Heat 4. Dylan Jones, a huge performance in Heat 4. He needed that badly. That This could kickstart his season. Currently 7th in points. We'll see if Dylan has not quite been able to challenge his teammate Justin Ricci, but now he might be able to. We're going to take a look here at your Heat 4 results. Dylan Jones with the big day, 19 points. Ethan O'Connor, despite finishing only 7th, second most points on the day at 13. Roberto Crown Jr. with 12. A lot of points distributed between that top six there. Unfortunately, Anthony Garcia Luna is going to miss this race. So, starting lineup is set. We'll see you for the main event. When I felt your shifting shoulder blades In the dark I laid there wide away I'm thinking that baby I remember everything that you forgot to say
standing in 